Hi, and welcome to our Q&A about requirements to move to Costa Rica. I'm Rebecca, and this is my husband, Alan. And we want to give a shout out of thanks and appreciation to one of our favorite restaurants, Complien. <laughs> I can only say it if I look at it. Com Complios Los Ranchos Restaurante. And it is located about five minutes, five kilometers south of the little town of uh, Rivas. And it has the best food and the nicest people. So if you come to the area of Parazella Dawn and you make it out toward Rivas, then um, you need to come over and give them, tell them uh, Alan and Rebecca sent you. That's right, because <laughs> this is really a, a fabulous place to eat some really good food. The service is always great, the price is always right, and you'll definitely enjoy coming out to this restaurant. They're just great people who allow us to be able to use their high speed internet, which is a lot faster than what we've got at home. Right, so we a lot of favorite restaurants. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, hey, so real quick, we want to uh, let you know that right now we're going to answer all of your questions that you posted on our live. So if you posted a question on our live, please take a moment right now to post those questions in the chat box right now so that we can answer your questions. You know, this is a time where we can say, hey, hello, April. Hello, Dean. Thank you so much for taking the time. We hope you are enjoying all of the great information that we have been giving you. You know, as people are beginning to come right back on, hey, please take a moment to hit that like button. A lot of people already have. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. And so if you'll take a look at the bottom of the chat box there, uh, in the bottom of the chat box, make sure that you put in your questions, your answers, everything there so that we can answer your questions. So let's go ahead. Uh, Rebecca, is there anything that we need to cover before we get into our question and answer session? No, just answer um, the questions that, that they have. All right. So, uh, hey, we've always, always got lots of great, great input, uh, folks, you know, and the temperature here is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, we always have average temperatures of around 60 to, to 70, 75 degrees in the Rivas area really super nice uh if you live in the mountains it's really just beautiful temperatures because uh, and i notice that dean says it's a minus 10 degrees celsius where he's at <laughs> i'm sorry buddy wouldn't want to be in your shoes but thanks for joining us today <laughs> doug says it's minus 15 degrees where he's at in alberta canada wow so uh unbelievable take a look at john who says uh negative four where he's at in, in nb uh fredericton ub that's uh where is that at? Uh, uh, you're gonna have to give me the initials on New B. Uh, Fredericton New B. New Brunswick, I think. So, anyway. Not me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's even hotter at the beach right now. Whoo, my goodness. Now, here, let's get into some of the questions because Dean says, well, you know, I'm curious, how has the tourism been since COVID started? Have you seen a significant downturn, downturn in vacationers or has it been about the same? Dean, it has nearly died. Uh, when the COVID came in and they pretty much shut everything down, nobody was traveling. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate because of the whole COVID, um, hundreds if not thousands of businesses, you know, people lost their businesses. Um, to, a lot of things shut down and did not open up because of the whole COVID situation. So it really is bad. now we're beginning to see things really starting to kind of get back to norm if there's such a thing as normal anymore yeah the restaurants are opening back up so that's a that's good right sign. the stores never did close you know not all the stores some did but you know here's a real important uh interesting thought as far as tourism goes you know planes weren't flying a lot of things when i traveled to miami and when i traveled back there was hardly a seat left on the plane. And that to me is quite amazing. It's like, how is it there's not a single seat on the plane yet, you know, some of the restaurants are still set as, you know, you can only have, I don't know, 50%, 75%, you know, not every, not every table can be filled, yet every chair was filled in that plane. So I won't get into all that, but it, it, what was nice, it was nice knowing that the planes were full, 
There yeah. was a lot of people, tourism coming, and of course they're buying the health insurance, you know, they're getting what they need so that they can safely meet the requirements that Costa Rica has so that they can enjoy visiting Costa Rica. And lots of people just wanting to come live to Costa Rica. Matter of fact, uh, there was a couple of girls who sat beside me, I say girls, ladies, who were coming here for the purpose of finding properties to buy. Yeah, they were going to start a business venture, right? They were looking for vacation properties, and they were going to uh, rent them out as B&Bs, you know, when they're not using them. Right. And uh, the last time we went down to Dominical was uh, just before you left, so that's probably about two or three weeks ago. Um, there were a lot of tourists at the beach. There were a mm -hmm. lot more tourists yeah. than before. I apologize. I, I, I have a low voice. But that'll be fixed when we get our lapel mics going. That's right. So we've got all that stuff in. So anyway, I'm constantly kind of reminding her to speak up, and she's reminding me to go lower. <laughs> <laughs> we meet somewhere in the middle. Anyway, we're trying to make sure that you can hear us. Uh, so if you don't hear us, please let us know. Uh, and you're right, Rebecca. You know, I remember when the COVID first came out, I mean, it was only within a few weeks, I went to down to Dominical Beach, and wow, it was like... Well, everything was uh, taped off. It was a ghost and, town. Yeah. You know, and there was no tourists there. But like you said, the last time we went, wow, it almost as it if almost it was like normal. Other, almost normal other than everyone had their face mask. Well, not not people. Except on the beach, yeah. you know, depending on where you were at. Right. The the vendors and the waiters, you know, the waitresses and uh, cashiers, they all wear their their mask. But um you know, if you're walking on the beach, people are not wearing their, their masks, you know, even, to, you know, walking through the streets, they're not wearing their masks. It's kind of left up to the, um, the individual if you're out walking, you know, in public where no one is around and you're in open air. Um, just like in uh, the U.S., we are required to wear our masks to come into a restaurant and to walk, you know, around in the restaurant to go to the restroom or to go pay. <coughs> required to wear your mask but if you once you're seated you don't have to have your mask that's right that's right and uh you know it's important to note and i'm glad you brought that up rebecca because um well, a lot of people are asking about that yeah you know, they're tired of the mask situation a lot of people are tired wherever of the mask. they're living and um it's it's not that stringent here right and a lot of people ask because when we create videos we try to create videos without the mask you know, and people are like, are they not wearing masks? No, we just create videos so that you're not seeing all of the mask stuff because it seems so. Oh, you're talking about when we film. Yeah, when we're like filming when we and stuff, right. But yeah. people are wearing their mask in most places. But it's important to know that um, while we're beginning to see more and more people that are not wearing their mask, really just all is personal preference. You know, I'm always amazed whenever I see uh, someone riding their bicycle, they're in the great outdoors and they're by themselves. Uh, nobody else is around, yet they're wearing a mask. So it all boils down to personal right. preference. Other than the places that it's required. There's a lot like of places that bank, are required. The grocery stores. Uh, most the bus places. Stop, in the most bus. public places. It's right. But like Alan said, I mean, uh, you'll see a person riding their, their bike with nobody around and they're wearing their mask. But you'll also see plenty of people riding their bike or without jogging a mask. without a mask. Absolutely. So. And here's a great question because Gabriel says, well, do we need to quarantine for two weeks when we land? And that's a no. Uh, and it depends on where you're looking at. Unless you tested positive. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, so we did, uh, you know, it did say on one website, it's, I want to say... Anyway, I can't remember which website it was, but it had to do with the insurance and uh, uh, Costa Rica that said that tourists were not required to quarantine uh, when they come over for two weeks. However, and I may have misinterpreted this, so don't take it verbatim. It seemed like to me that if I lived here or if I was a resident, when I come over, I'm supposed to quarantine for two weeks. So that didn't make sense to me. Wait a minute. You can travel over with the health pass and not quarantine, but if I live here, I had to quarantine. But like I said, I may have misinterpreted that. But that is a great question. As from what I saw, you don't have to quarantine for two weeks when you come over as a tourist. Right. 
And um, of course, if you tested positive, I don't think they'll let you get on the airplane anyway. So. Now, April asked a good question. Does the country have many COVID cases? And by and large, for the most part, Costa Rica has had fewer COVID cases than almost anywhere in the world. And that has been amazing. Yeah, uh, while they have a lot of, you know, have cases, um, the percentage per million of the pop, let's see, the percentage of the population, it's a low percentage. But what's most remarkable is the death rate from COVID is very low. So yeah. that's, you know, they do have people and have cases. And um, for example, in Paris Eladon, things had, um, you know, the COVID cases had dropped. So they opened a lot more stuff up. You know, they went from like stage three to uh, stage two to stage three. And then the cases rose sharply again. Yeah. So they, you know, went back to stage two for about a month and the cases went down. But the uh, number of deaths, COVID-related deaths, as a percentage of the population is very low. I mean, that information is available on the internet. That's right. Now, another <clears throat> really good question was, uh, was if you leave the country, so Bill said, uh, if you're in Costa Rica on a tourist visa for three months, like we are, and you leave, let's say going to Panama or Nicaragua to for the day to renew your visa, is it possible to avoid the vaccine? Are there other requirements? So we'll be able to answer your question at the moment. As far as I know, the land borders, and meaning if you're to travel to Panama or Nicaragua, they're still closed. You can't actually do that right now the last i heard okay the only way you could actually enter into costa rica is via an airplane which then brings me to the next question that someone said they have a friend who is coming here by boat okay so they're going to be coming down from the states via boat what's the best advice you could give them you know i really can't give them any advice on that, that. You know, because I'm really not familiar, but the advice I would say is, hey, if you're coming by boat, you are going to have to uh, come into immigration at some point or another. I don't fully know how that works, but if I were you coming in by boat, I would go ahead and fill out my health pass and I would have everything ready. When you fill out your health pass, it does ask how you're coming in. And so you might learn what you have to do by filling out that health pass filling out the health pass is absolutely free. So if you begin to fill out the health pass and then you try to put in, you're trying to arrive by boat, it might redirect you to, well, you can't or you can or whatever. That's what I would do. So here shortly, I'll have a video showing you step by step exactly what I did to fill out the health pass so that you can see how easy or difficult it is. So it really didn't take that much time. Once you're prepared, it really is easy. If you don't know, you don't know. So I'll have that video go live pretty soon. Yeah. Now, and I wonder if they're talking about like the cruise ships because- No, he has a personal boat oh, he's coming okay. in, not by okay. cruise ship, okay? I, I'm not aware that the cruise ships have, uh, have started started back uh, Johnny I'm glad too because Johnny says I'm glad to see you're out of the dog house <laughs> <laughs> yes you know and so uh, I know y'all don't believe that he has ever been in the dog house <laughs> no, I am really <laughs> spoiled. So in reality, I don't know that I've ever been in the doghouse. I've got one of the most amazing wives anyone could ever have. So kudos out to her. Uh, but, you know, uh, I was supposed to have come in on the 18th is when I was supposed to come back. And I had to change my plans to the 20th. And so that's what put me in the doghouse because she really wanted to see me a whole lot sooner than that. So. <laughs> yes, I'll put you in the doghouse like, for a minute and then take you that's back That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I uh, want a uh, big shout out to David because David, if you look down at the questions and comments, David, uh, yeah, he donated to the cause. He really appreciates what we do and the information and he donated five dollars to us thank you so very much we appreciate any amount okay so if you do want to donate to the calls right down at the bottom at the chat box there's a dollar sign there you can click on the dollar sign and you can donate or you can join our forum you can join our forum and hey for a measly 33 cents a day or ten dollars a month you can get all access to all of the premium areas of the forum and we would just love for you to be able to do that david thank you so very very much if you want to uh actually donate you can do that by clicking the dollar sign so let's take a look at some more questions here. Thank you again, David. Uh, PP says, 
how's the actual COVID enforcement by local authorities? Is the police aggressive? Do they issue fines for those that don't obey? You know, that's a really great question. Uh, great question. Uh, you want to address that, Rebecca? Yeah, well, I've not seen the police enforce anything, but um, I think Costa Ricans understand that if they don't obey, the police will enforce it. Um, almost every store, every bank has a security guard, and they do enforce it. If, you know, if I try to, if I forget my mask and I'm trying to walk in, um, they they stop me. And they say, will ask you, you know, like, oh, put on your mask, forgot, please. You know? Right. Yeah, and so um, it is enforced like that. Uh, if you happen to make it past the security guard into the store, or the bank without your mask, you you will be asked. Yeah, to someone leave. you know, someone from the store, some one of the employees will ask you to put your mask on. Okay, yeah. which you know, it's not often we forget. You know. Uh, However, yeah, I've never tried to go in, um, you know, anywhere right. without it. Uh, you know, I respect that that's a requirement. Right. Uh, you know, the good thing about Costa Ricans and Ticos, they're very obedient. Uh, and so, you know, if Costa Rica says to wear your mask, they wear your mask. Uh, if they say to social distance, they do. Uh, Costa Ricans are, are very nice, nice people. And by and large, uh, very friendly, very helpful. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have a whole lot of police trying to enforce things because they're very obedient to begin with, okay? Yeah. I think the only time I've seen them get riled up is um, when they have a protest. Like they're protesting something like recently. It was that about, seems to be very unfair for yeah, them, and it like has to do with government taxes, issues. Yeah, you know, and stuff, and uh, nothing violent. Just uh, they were pretty That's adamant right. about, um, you know, that this was wrong, and they were protesting. That's right. So they pretty were much blocking the highway. That's right. You know. So pretty much all Costa Ricans are very, uh, very easygoing. Okay, and yeah, you know. There's been a time or two, like Rebecca said, I tried to walk in. Oh, forgot my mask. Turn around and and, and you know if, if yeah, they'll st you know don't forget your mask. Uh, go get it real quick. So uh, and yeah, April we did get here in 2013 and have learned so so much. Lots of great compliments in here that says hey, thank you for your advice. Uh, thank you so much for what you're doing. Uh, so we greatly appreciate all your kind words. Uh, you know because we do work very very hard to research the information to give you this information. You know, it's not easy to make sure. We try our best to give you the information. We do the research that takes time. And as always, we are giving you the information based on our perspective, our personality. It doesn't mean that we are the expert, although we are trying our best to give you the correct information. Right. For example, we came here without doing a whole lot of research because um, we had a friend that recommended um, and she had done lots of research and so um, under her recommendation we went to the southern border we went to San Vito okay love the area but my goodness um, you know there was no movie theater no mall, no Walmart and difficult nothing. shopping you know, the shopping was difficult but the area was beautiful the people were wonderful and I kind of thought that that was all of Costa Rica you know, little did I know when we traveled, um, you know, through Paris de la Dome, I was, I was in shock. I was like, look, a movie theater, you know? Of course, it only shows two movies at a time, but uh, also um, uh, there was a little, there was a mall. So my point is, um, we had to learn a lot of things. That's right. Uh, the hard way. <laughs> so that makes us a little... Uh, it kind of makes us the expert on learning, <laughs> learning from our experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, also, what that makes me think of is, depending on what area you come to, you can get a very different picture of Costa Rica. Now, Absolutely. If you, if you go to the Caribbean side and, you know, you go to Puerto Viejo or uh, Cahuita, man, it's, it's different there. There's a really uh, Jamaican vibe there. It's very tropical. Um, no no big towns you know no movie theater that's right that thing no malls or anything like that but if you go to san jose well there's a lot of culture there it's a huge difference yeah, in san jose yeah it's huge difference and then if you go down to san Vito, you think you you know you're settling the uh the you're, wild land you you're know? in the land of the lost in san Vito. <laughs> big difference yeah you're up in the um 
what do they call it? the uh, cloud forest and the uh, the rainforest, you know. So. so remember, we're always sharing from our perspective. You know, there's always going to be people who say negative things on our videos or, you know, we always say, hey, in most of Costa Rica, you're going to have six months of rain and six months of dry season. Uh, some people say, no, it's not true. Well, it, it depends that's where you from are. your perspective where you're at. <laughs> In, where we live at currently in Rivas, in Rivas, it really is about nine months of rain and three months of, of dry season, okay? But that's not the majority of Costa Rica. The majority of Costa Rica is six months of dry, six months of rain. So it really is based on your perspective. And, you know, people will say all kind of crazy things and try to say, well, you're wrong. Well, like we said, we're not saying we're right. We're saying from our perspective, trying to give you the best information, okay? Uh, let's get into some questions here. Um, some people, uh, let's see here. Bill says, is organic food available in all areas or is it hard to find? Wow, that's a great question. So based on your definition of organic food, when you go into the grocery stores, let's say you're going into the grocery store trying to find organic food, very very difficult to find unless you're in san jose huge city you can find almost anything in san jose but in some of the other areas you know most places you don't have a walmart most places you don't have organic but where there's tourist areas the tourist areas learn that gringos like organic and so you'll have that now if you're saying can i get organic vegetables Yes, in a lot of places you can because almost every town has a farmer's market or what they call a feria. And a feria is a farmer's market where the locals are growing food. But a lot of locals use a lot of pesticides. So does that qualify it as organic or not? Yeah, I'm not sure on the, the definition exactly um, of organic. Uh, our neighbor tries to, he says his stuff is organic. Yes. He uses um, natural pesticides. You know, like a, a mixture of vinegar. I don't know his, what his recipe is, but anyway, uh, he uses natural pesticides. But it's not uncommon. I was shocked because part of the reason we came to Costa Rica is because of the um, environmentally friendly uh, message that is out there. I was shocked that to see people walking around with um, the little spray backpacks, you know, spraying the sides of the road. Um, they still, a lot of people spray their, their crops. Um, so it just, it just depends. I hope we're answering this question well. Right. A farmer's market, um, you really have to ask the grower, you know, does he use any pesticides? Right, and you may or may not get the truth. However, here's what's important to note is that you can get a lot of great vegetables and produce at the ferry and you can get it at unbelievable great prices and you can eat healthy here a lot easier than you can in the United States. Whether they follow the rules as to what is really organic or not, well, I can't answer that question. Right, and the good thing is you can grow your own uh, vegetables here because of the the climate the temperatures that's right now here's some other good questions okay uh, because April says hey do you own a vehicle or do you use mass transit yes we do own a vehicle and as soon as we got here we rented a vehicle and uh, I didn't want to keep that rental long okay I didn't want to spend unnecessary money so I only kept it a day or two quickly 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 bought me a motorcycle you can buy a motorcycle anywhere from two thousand or three thousand dollars and you can get around and then when we found a good vehicle we bought a vehicle but if you choose to use the mass transportation public transportation is very 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 did i say very very good public transportation is great yes because even though we had a motorcycle i couldn't ride the motorcycle by myself i'm too short <laughs> so um I took the bus a lot of times uh, to go get groceries and just to go do some shopping. And uh, yes, it is very wonderful. That's it's a, right. A great system. You can get around almost anywhere by public transportation. Now you need to keep in mind, obviously the more remote you are, the it's not as easy. That's we true. live you have to in walk That's to right. the bus stop. <laughs> we live in Rivers, Rivers and so where we live at we'd have to walk a quarter mile, which is down the driveway, a quarter mile to the main highway. Well, at the main highway, because it's remote, well, there's only one bus in the morning, one bus in the evening, but 
the closer to town yeah, you live, the, but, the more But frequently. three miles into Rivas, then the public transportation comes very frequent, okay? Mm -hmm. So in Rivas, you can get the bus all the time. It's just that we're uh, outside of Rivas, further north, so you just have to keep that in mind. It doesn't matter. Public transportation is awesome, and uh, if you're in an area where it's touristy or a lot more people, you can get an Uber or a taxi and get to where you need to go. Public transportation is great. I would say that if you um, lived fairly close to a, um, to a small town, you can do without a car. Right. I mean, you know, right. Between taxis and uh, public transportation. That's right. You re there, there are lots of people that have come here that chose not to buy a vehicle and they get around completely yeah. on public transportation. Yeah. Bill it says, thank you. It takes a while to uh, find a used car, too. Yeah, it, you know, you don't want to get in a hurry finding a used vehicle. So, you know, if you're able to buy a motorcycle or want to, that's why we bought a motorcycle. It was cheap. You know, $3,000 brand spanking new for a high quality Yamaha bike. And we rode all over the place. And then when we found a good used vehicle, we bought one. Because you want to keep in mind, it is uh, buying used vehicles are expensive. Okay, so you have to take your time to find one, and we could go into detail on that on another vehicle, well, another I think we video. Did some in another you know, video. You know, uh, Bill said thank you very much for answering that question about the organic food because you know he's a uh, hundred percent organic and raw vegan. And hey, we're vegan as well. Uh, I like to say I'm not crazy vegan, and not saying anything bad. If you are crazy vegan, it's just that you know we try to eat as healthy as possible. We're vegan. Hey, Hey, I'm at my favorite fish restaurant, so I will eat a little fish, and that's not vegan, according to some people, but we try to, uh, it's you know, our goal. <laughs> yeah, we, we eat very, very healthy. I exercise a lot, so that's good to know, okay? Uh, Michelle says, is it better to rent a car ahead of time online versus arrival? Yes, Michelle. Uh, you can rent a vehicle online. You're going to always save money by doing that. So yes, rent a vehicle online, but you do need to know that um, there's not a whole lot of rental vehicles, but when you fly in, yes, you're gonna find lots of rentals at the airports. Rent a vehicle online, save some money, and then that way you can rent that vehicle. Keep in mind, like any rental place, you know, we rented a vehicle at the airport, uh, went all the way down to San Beto, we dropped it off. It's always gonna cost you more if you don't bring it back to where you rented it, okay? And I think we had to spend an extra hundred dollars because we didn't bring it back to the airport, okay? Just something for you to know. And a lot of the smaller towns, like the whole area of San Beto did not have a, a rental car return. That's so right. We had to drive about we had to an travel hour and an, a half. Yeah, an hour and a half to drop it off of that rental. Mm -hmm. So there's, you Lots of rental places in large cities, but small cities, it's yeah. not like you can just, hey, I'm going to drop it off at, right. at uh, the rental place. No, you're yeah. going to have to travel a little ways. And San Beto is growing, so <clears throat> yeah. it's been uh, a while since we've been there. They may have a car return. Yeah. Now, um, John asked an interesting question, which we want to do a video here uh, about soon. He says, <clears throat> excuse me, he says, hey, how is the Walmart compared to U.S. or Canadian ones? you will be shocked. <laughs> you know, uh, we love being able to go into Walmart, or Rebecca really, really does, because it's a one-stop shop. Yeah. You can buy whatever you want. However, in Costa Rica, it's very important to know, when you buy something, you bought it. You bought it. Yeah. In Costa Rica, it's not common practice that if you buy something to return it. Uh, and so the big thing is that when you go into Walmart anywhere in most of the world, uh, there's always a return center and it usually has a huge line. There is no return center in the Walmart at Costa Rica, okay? It's just not common practice to return things. Matter of fact, when you buy things in Costa Rica, I remember one time buying 30 light bulbs for a friend who didn't have any light bulbs, big place. Anyway, they took every single light bulb out of the box, put it in a socket, to show me that it works, put it back in the box, because when you buy it, you don't return in Costa Rica. Right. Other than that, I think uh, the Walmart is very similar. Of course, they carry things that um, the Costa Ricans are gonna buy. Um, very colorful plates and sheets, and you know, I just wanted a, a set of uh, gray sheets. I like gray. And uh, it was hard to find a set of gray sheets because everything was bright orange and blue and, you know, and things That's like right. that. Um, we were looking for a scale, <laughs> and there. That's amazing. He had to bring a scale back from uh, from Miami because um, I saw a scale one time at Walmart, and 
or when you see it, you, you need to buy it if you want it because I've been looking at that same Walmart for like, I don't know, five months now and they never did restock a scale. So that's just an example. That's right. But other than that, it's, it's a, you know, very similar. They have a little food court in it and they have a huge produce area and you can find almost anything you want. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, the thing to keep in mind is that the Walmart is going to be very similar, except every single Walmart will stock what sells the best in that area. And so you're not going to have a whole lot of American brands inside that Walmart because, of course, it costs more money to import American brands. Uh, when we go in there and... Well, I'm sorry, you know, that's true in other stores, but in Walmart... The imported brands are competitive price. I well, they are a competitive price. However, you won't find as many. Like right, it's I go limited. in, right? It's not as much. I go in to buy some Del Monte peas. I have a hard time finding Del Monte peas. I went in to buy some Campbell's pork and beans. Not, not for me. I, I, we don't eat canned goods, but I, I buy it for a friend who's in a very remote area, and it's hard to get those items. They, the American brands run out very quickly. Uh, so it's important. It's important to know that while Walmart is very similar, they will stock what sells the most in that area. Right. I couldn't buy duct tape in Walmart, but in the United States, I could find duct tape at any Walmart. So it's just different things right. you That's have a to good know. Example too, yeah. You know. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, lots of great questions. I just love it. Uh, hey, reminder, there's a lot of people on the live right now. There's over 40 people live right now and only 24 likes. So please be sure to smash that like button. That sends a great signal to YouTube that says that you like and you value this content. So right now, please hit that like button, hit that like button, hit the like button, and it helps support us in a great, great way. So thank you very much. Hey, putting in comments, uh, what you like, dislike, putting in comments helps us greatly as well. So back to those questions. Thank you very much because, uh, you know, some people, uh, Rudy says, hey, smash the like button. Thank you for that reminder, okay? Because we get busy answering your questions, trying to help you. Um, uh, Johnny says, have you planted a garden in Costa Rica? We're interested in growing a lot of our own fruit and vegetables when we move down. And yes, I have. You know, I do love gardening. I haven't planted anything on a big scale because we have rented and stuff. Uh, but yes, it's very easy to plant a garden. Things are a little bit different here, not greatly, uh, but because we're so much closer to the equator and because of so much sun, you may have to put a shade cloth or some plastic so that uh, it doesn't get beaten by the sun or during rainy season didn't get beaten down by the rain. You're right. We, we planted some squash and um, we didn't know and uh, the sun burnt it up to a crisp. That's right, because we didn't have a shade cloth. Just didn't right. make it. So, hey, but trial and error, you'll quickly learn, okay? Um, oh, someone asked a great question here that I wanted to get back to that asked about the real estate deals. How has the COVID affected real estate prices, okay? I saw that in the comments, wanted to go back to it, and it, and it slipped my mind. So, anyway, someone said, how has COVID affected real estate prices? We have noticed that the real estate prices have really begun to drop, 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 drop. Right, it is not uncommon to see 50,000 um, slashed off of the price. Or 100,000 slashed off of a price. Yeah. Prices have dropped tremendously because not nearly as many people coming in for tourism and things. So That's right now, in my opinion, I'm not a realtor, I'm not an attorney, Right now, it's a buyer's market, and you can buy stuff at some phenomenal prices. When I say phenomenal prices, you can always buy things at a cheaper price. Once you come into Costa Rica, stay a few months, meet the locals. Anytime you deal with a realtor, you're going to get higher prices. Common sense says a realtor, he gets paid on commission, and he's going to get paid way more money by showing you a $500,000 property instead of a $100,000 property. But if you don't use a realtor and you talk to a local, you can get some phenomenal deals. So that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, come here, spend some time, you can get some great deals. However, what I am seeing is I'm seeing that there are a lot of people coming to Costa Rica 
wanting to come to Costa Rica. So I'm beginning to see some prices creep up there a little bit. And my prediction is that it may go up because of the current state of what's going on in the United States. People are like, hey, I'm going to Costa Rica. Prices are beginning to go up. I hope that ain't going to happen. So now's the time to buy before prices shoot up. But as always, supply and demand. The more people buy it, the more the price goes up. Get it now while you can get it cheap. All right. Some of the, um, the real estate sites have uh, what they call a fire sale section or a um, motivated uh, owner, motivated seller section. So you can check those things out. And I always give a, a word of caution. Um, be sure to do your due dil diligence. Be sure to, um, to shop around. Don't just go with the first price because I have seen um, similar properties sell for be you know the asking prices be extremely different um by hundreds of thousands of dollars so uh e even on the real estate sites like maybe a three bedroom one bath house uh eighty five thousand dollars another one be three hundred eighty five thousand dollars and they look similar and be in similar locations don't know why that is but um, you really want to shop around. And like Alan said, you know, maybe talking to the locals, but if you're going to talk to a local, be ready to bargain. Be um, ready to dicker, right? Yeah, because um, when we came, someone told us, you know, a lot of times they're asking double the price. Well, I didn't really believe them. I thought, how can somebody ask double the price? It's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, we've seen that. You know, sometimes they're, especially when they see a gringo. <laughs> That's right. So, Rudy, I hope that answered your question because that was Rudy that says, are there still good real estate deals in the Southern Zone, Paris, Zeladon, Uvita? Hey, there's great deals all over Costa yeah. Rica right now. Yeah, okay. I've been seeing a lot of stuff for sale in Uvita. I yeah. don't know uh, why. Well, Uvita's is up and coming, you know. Uh, doesn't have nearly as many tourists, and they're really trying to promote that. So I think that might be the deal. I don't know. So anyway, um, another great uh, question here is uh, when we were talking about real estate, Gabriel says, well, do you mean locals that own property that you want to purchase? Yes. Instead of buying from a realtor, you know, I, I've always said if you every town has a farrier, almost a local farmer's market. And if you go there and hang out, you're going to meet lots of locals. And and just going through town, locals will see a gringo and say, hey, I got some property for sale. Do you want to buy it? You know, we have had many, many people say, come look at my property. Come in yeah. because they own a lot of property. A lot of, you know, yeah. some people own a lot of property and they want to sell you property because it's an easy way for them to, to get a chunk of money. So you can really buy some properties cheap once you get to know some of the locals. Yeah. Now in the city and in the towns, it's not uncommon for um, a person to own just a teeny tiny lot with their house on it that barely has room, you know, barely any yard. But um, there are lots of farmers That's right. that own uh, big pieces That's of property. Right. Now, Johnny asked a great question that I almost don't want to answer or don't want to announce. Uh, Johnny says, are you planning on buying a house or building one? Because we've rented all over looking for the perfect place. And she says, I think you mentioned this in, a, in the past. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to answer that question, but I will say we got some amazing news coming real soon. And we'll tell you more about that later. But yes, eventually we will be building on our own place yeah. instead of renting. And but, planting a garden. <laughs> and planting a garden, putting down roots. Hey, but I'm telling you too much already. Okay. Um, yeah. A lot of people saying, hey, like Brian saying, we, we plan to visit soon. Or they plan to visit in November. Uh, oh, a lot of people are saying that if you pay cash or don't use a credit card, you can save money. Okay, yes, and that is true. You can save money, okay, yeah. if you pay cash. Yeah, and to go back to the real estate question, um, there are a lot of um, Americans, can, um, you, let's see, Canadians. Gringos. Gringos, yeah, that have uh, their properties for sale. Um, they came here, a lot of people came here around... Uh, 20, 30 years ago, yeah. and they're ready to go back to their home country. And so we see a lot of um, houses for sale from that age group, uh, people that are like in their 80s, I guess. They're wanting to... Yeah, they're ready to go home, you know, the, the last of their years to enjoy it with family. And they've been here for 20 years. Now they're ready to sell. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of that. And um, we have 
seen recently um, new builds, which I had not noticed before. Like when we first came here seven years ago, I, I didn't notice that on the real estate sites, but now people are beginning to um, do new builds yeah. on little lots. Now, when we first came here, there were communities, like uh, gated communities, that somebody would buy a big piece of land, put up a gate, and you had to be careful of those um, because they didn't all get developed. That's right. Uh, a lot so of some of those were scams. Yeah, you didn't want to pre-buy. But um, now people are starting to just buy a little bitty lot in some neighborhood and put up a new build and, and put it up for sale in That's the real right. estate sites. Now, uh, another good question, April asked, she says, that, you know, I noticed in some of your videos, one in particular that you did about rentals, most of the rentals did not come with a washer or a dryer. Are washers and dryers extremely expensive? That's a cultural thing. In Costa Rica, most of the houses that you rent will come practically with four walls. In other words, what I mean is when you rent a, a place in Costa Rica, a lot of times it's going to be empty with nothing but walls. A lot of them will not even have a kitchen sink. We've had to put in kitchen sinks in several of the places, okay? So it's not that they're not available. Yes, you can buy a washer and dryer, and you can buy what I call a typical Tico washer. A lot of extra work on that. But you can buy an American style type washing machine. It's not crazy expensive. It is, it is more, more expensive than, than in the United, United States. States. Of course, but, they, it has to be imported to get a, uh, a Maytag or a G. That's or whatever. right. It has to be imported. But, um, and this is the case for a lot of rural areas. Okay? We forget about in the city. Um, in the big cities, in San Jose, if you rent a house, I mean, they have really, really nice houses in, in San Jose, you know, fully furnished and um, almost to, you know, American specs. But we assume that if you're coming to Costa Rica, you're not coming to live in the city. So a lot of the information that we give is from our perspective of living in rural That's areas, right. you know, out in the country. So. so the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, in Costa Rica, uh, as unfortunate as it sounds, there's uh, a few people that have a lot of money, they're rich, but the majority of them don't have a lot of money and they're poor, okay? Uh, that's not a bad thing. They're enjoying life, but they're not living according to your standards, you know, which is why, yeah, you can come to Costa Rica and you can live on $1,000 a month, but you're not going to be uh, going out to eat every day or uh, you're not going to be eating steak and egg, you know, it depends on your lifestyle. So there's Costa Ricans that live here easy on $500 a month, okay? So it's understanding lifestyle. Uh, in San Jose, like Rebecca said, you can find some amazing, beautiful places to rent and houses. Cost of living in San Jose is always gonna be way, way more than anywhere else in Costa Rica. Yeah, really pretty uh, houses with hot showers and hot yeah. water in the sinks. and. You know, they drive really nice cars and, you know. And it's all so, blacktop, but it doesn't mean there's yeah, things that. sidewalks and blacktop That's roads. right. <laughs> but we've been in San Jose near Walmart where you drive down the street and there's a great big huge manhole missing. And there's huge grates missing on the sidewalk. So there's, hey, just because it's San Jose doesn't mean it's perfect. Yeah, depends on the part of the city. We've That's also right. seen some cows loose. <laughs> I mean, you would never expect to see cows free roaming in the city of San Jose. But it's happened. Uh, here's another great question. Natalie. <clears throat> Natalie says, where do you buy cocoa trees or chocolate trees? Okay. So chocolate trees are in a lot of places. Has this big, beautiful fruit on it where they make chocolate. And we have found several great nurseries. And if you go to the nurseries, which nurseries are not a very popular place, but in uh, where we live at now, in Rivas, in Rivas, Rivas has a great nursery where you can buy just about any kind of tree you want. Parazelladon has, has several nurseries. Yes, Parazelladon has a lot of great yeah. nurseries. I say a lot. When I say a lot, that's two or three. That's a lot <laughs> when most of Costa Rica you don't yeah. see a we're nursery. We're comparing it to being down in San Vito where there wasn't really... You didn't... Um, there was, we couldn't really find nurseries. anything. Yeah, I saw the occasional person uh, selling orchids or um, the little cactus, the little succulents, you know, yeah. so... Uh, but now we're, we're only talking about a three-hour drive, so right, you know, you right. Go into the city to get I mean, no place. matter where you live in Costa Rica, whether you're living at the northern border or the southern border, which both of those borders are extreme, you can travel within three hours of either one of those borders and be in a city large enough that you can 
can get anything that you want as far as uh, you know a nursery or going to a Walmart but you know there's there's a lot of Walmarts in San Jose but you know when you leave San Jose there's not there is one in uh, uh, Paris Zeladon or San Isidro which that only happened a few months ago so you know within three hours you can really no matter where you live really go and get what you want but you're gonna have to travel okay um, someone answered a question says I heard that you have to pay very high taxes or duties on your imported items but I think that the government is working on changing this policy so yes let me address that real quick so yes anything you import the duties depending on what it is gonna be very expensive however there is a proposed law I uh, haven't heard any more on it. I do know that they're working on it, and I do know that Costa Rica is doing whatever they can to try to entice or encourage gringos to come to Costa Rica because they realize that you know when, when uh, gringos come, it's going to boost the local economy because they have more money than most, and it's gonna, if they spend their money locally, which most of them do, it's going to help the environment. So uh, they're still working on that, okay? But right now, the import is the, Yeah, is right expensive. now, the import is very expensive, and we're hoping that proposed law does get passed, which then if it does, that means that you'll be able to bring in a container with your, with your household goods and it not cost you anything, okay? Uh, another question here, uh, Hasma says, well, what kind of jobs do you do? We both work online. My Rebecca, uh, Rebecca is an accountant. She does an accountant for all my online businesses. Uh, she also works as an accountant for a construction company in the States. Uh, I do a lot of online things, whether it's a website building, your hosting, web hosting, domains, uh, creating courses, a lot of things like that, selling on Amazon. Okay, so we're very fortunate that, you know, wherever I go, I must have good internet. As long as I have good internet, then I can make money online. Yeah, and we were doing this uh, online work way before we came to Costa Rica. Right. That's the only reason why we were able to just sell all of our stuff and come because um, we had been working online for several years. That's right. Before coming. <clears throat> you know, um, uh, Crunchy-ish Mama said, you know, she's the one that asked about shipping your stuff here. <clears throat> you know, uh, appliances, mattresses, all your household good. And she also asked, well, what about financing uh, in the States versus moving uh, and financing through Costa Rica? Um, you can almost forget getting any financing once you come here. Uh, in order for you to get financing when you come here, you're almost always going to have to be a resident. So you can forget about getting financing coming here. Okay. I might be wrong on that, uh, but talking to uh, one of my gringo friends who is a resident who is married to a Tico, it's very, very difficult as a foreigner to get financing through a Costa Rican bank. Mm -hmm. In fact, We've seen um, financing just begin to, to happen since we've been here. When we arrived seven years ago, we noticed how hardly anybody down in San Vito had a car. Um, and when they did have a car, it was an older car. Well, like uh, I guess about two, three years after being here, we started noticing a lot of new vehicles. And we're like, what is going on? Everybody's getting a new vehicle. Well, we we uh, looked at in the news and, and read about it and uh, Costa Rica's banks began financing vehicles for people. Right. Now, here's another great question because uh, uh, Rudy says, well, what is good internet? I've got one gig up and one down. Well, Rudy, if you got one up, one down, you're going to have some great internet in Costa Rica. <laughs> in comparison, you know, I was shocked that as soon as I got into Miami, Florida, you know, my, my Marine Corps buddy Rodney, his internet was like 60 or 70 down with 50 up. I would give a right leg for that. Uh, right now, I'm paying $100 a month, and I get six down and three up. And that's enough to do what I need to do, but I would much, I would prefer to have better, okay? So, and then another question here from, from uh, PP, PP says, well, is good internet available in the rural areas? And if so, what kind of speeds can I expect? There you go. You can expect to get very slow speeds, which means you might get six up and three down, but you have to find a local entrepreneur. However, when you get into the country, make sure you contact me because uh, I, at the moment, I am now installing internet at the most remote area in Costa Rica. 
uh, a place that they've never had internet before and I'm having to actually learn that process and, and do what it takes to install internet so that we can have internet at a place that I might tell you about pretty soon, wink, wink, okay? <laughs> so, uh, yes, you can get internet in very, very remote places, but you better be willing uh, to pay for the setup or pay for a local entrepreneur to help you with that process. Yeah, and uh, things are changing. Uh, we see lines being uh, run for the um, Op fiber, optic. fiber optic. And the, I guess what we have, uh, what is it, three, five up? I mean, we have six up and three down. Three down. That's enough to stream um, Netflix, to stream online uh, music, and it's enough for us to do our work, even though I guess the, the main problem is that it's not fast enough to do a live. That's right. And it's difficult to have telephone conversations because even though um, something will stream like a, a Netflix movie or, or the music, when you're having a live conversation, a phone conversation, the um, it'll go round and round. Yeah, it buffers the whole buffers, time. Yes. It yep. buffers like every few minutes, and so it's really annoying to have a phone conversation yeah. like that. Now, uh, Peter says, hey, uh, guys, have you been to Pasacanoas at the Panamanian border? If so, can you talk a little about this area? <coughs> Before you start on that, um, did we say that like in areas like San Jose and Jaco, some of the more popular tourist areas, there is fast internet? Oh, absolutely. If you get to the areas where there is a lot of tourists, I think in Jaco you can actually get 100 megs up. I mean 100 megs down. I don't know about the upload speed, but their upload speeds are very good. The reason we come to this restaurant, at this restaurant we get 25 down. Now this restaurant is in a rural area, but they're on the main highway, so they get 25 down with I think about six up which is enough to do this live yet some of you say why is it fuzzy well that tells you why and, and of course the replay hopefully uh, once it is rendered on YouTube is better but you got to keep in mind uh, 25 down with six up is great internet in remote areas yeah. so even if even in the rural like the the country areas if you live close to the road <laughs> then they've run, you know, there's internet available. Right. We don't like to live close to the road. We don't like uh, We like to traffic. be in the remote areas. Yeah. We, we don't like want to hear the- animals the, the, and the, birds and, you know, and right. stuff. So we, we don't like living close to the road. So our internet is slow because we like to live in remote areas. I don't want to hear the traffic noise. I don't want to hear the dogs. I don't want to hear the neighbors having a party. I want to, I want, I want peace and tranquility. That's why I came here. Okay, so you've got to pick your pain, right? Uh, anyway. So, okay, let's go back to what did he so, ask about Pasanoa? Uh, uh, Peter says, you know, can you talk about Pasanoa and the Panamanian border? Yes, we've been there, been there a lot. I love to go to Pasacanoa for the duty free shopping. You can buy lots of great stuff there in Pasacanoa. Love the city mall. It's That's almost right. like shopping in the United States. However, don't ever, did I say don't ever, don't ever try to stamp out at Pasacanoa. In my opinion, I've always i've never had a good experience there's always people there hey uh, i'll help you get through the border and then of course uh, but i'm going to charge you a hundred bucks you got to do that don't do it don't do it just go to rio sereno where you can stamp out at the border and it's a lot easier obviously at the moment the land borders are closed but when it happens but i love going to pass canoas for the ease of shopping and you can get all kind of stuff you might have to look at 30 or 40 different places to find what you're looking for, but you can find it at the Pasacanoas border and you can get it there pretty cheap because anything that you buy in Panama is going to be way, way, way cheaper than what you can buy in Costa Rica. Matter of fact, every time we go to the border, I try to make sure my gas, my, my vehicle's on empty and I fill up because I literally... If I spend $100 filling up my tank in Costa Rica, it's going to cost me about $50 or $60 filling up my tank in Panama. It's that big a difference. Right. Okay. Um, like that was one of the things we liked about living in San Vito. We were close to the border and we just go to Panama to pick up groceries and fill up the tank. Uh, okay, so Jackie says, what's a good area to stay for a week vacation to explore future residency. If I were you, I would probably go to, to uh, San Isidro. 
uh, and that way you can enjoy seeing San Ysidro where it's not too big a city, but then you can explore a little bit about residency. We do have a residency person inside the forum that can answer some of your questions inside the forum and uh, we can give you some help in that area okay so you might want to join the forum at forum.cloudforestchapel.com so you can talk to our residency expert inside there but yeah i would suggest going to san isidro uh, gabriel says i have my heart set on hako for the surfing uh, beachfront condo which I've saved up cash for I just had to make the right next step so glad to have found this channel absolutely Gabriel uh, Dominical has some great surfing as well however uh, Dominical doesn't have condos and you can find some phenomenal deals on some condos in Hako yeah I've been seeing a lot of condos for sale don't know if they're you know it looks like some of them are a little older but I've been seeing some new you know looking uh, condos and in Dominical, I don't know if you noticed, but they are building um, up in the mountains. Um, we passed by it when we went to the restaurant Jolly Rogers. They're building some condos. That's uh, right. In there. So, you know, so, you know, hey. Dominical has great surfing and it's close to San Isidro. But yeah. Hako, Hako is good if you want to live in, you know, I, I kind of talked bad about Hako in, in one uh, video because um, I just found it too uh, touristy, you know. The, it, too much activity going on for me it wasn't as laid back i guess uh, right. as nature and you know hako's not bad if you're not living in the city of hako however we've had people say it's not that bad well you know you have to understand that it's hako your preference I, right, I don't like to live in this city it's your it's your lifestyle you know for me i don't like to live in this city regardless of how small or large the city is however hako it's lots of tourists Anytime you have lots of tourists, you're going to have lots of prostitution because prostitution is legal in Costa Rica, which if you have prostitution, you're going to have lots of drugs. You're going to have lots of crime. Okay, that doesn't make it bad, but it's not my preference. But you can live just on the outskirts of Hako five, ten minutes away, and you'll just fall in love and find those Hako condos and enjoy the amazing yeah. surfing or the amazing surfing in Dominica. And look, during the day... Uh Hako is family friendly. They got the Hako walk. It's beautiful. Um, I don't see any any drugs or prostitution going on during the day. Um, it's it's very very nice, um, and the beach is nice, and they have nice condos. But at night, if you're going to go hang out at the bars, um, you know that's where you're going to see that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, John, and, and, and a lot of people are coming for the nightlife. A lot of the young oh, people yeah, are, there's a lot of young people the want here. the nightlife. You we, know, we don't care for uh, that. So I'm we're... I'm really young. Matter of fact, I think I just turned 29. <laughs> and a half. <laughs> and a, <laughs> going on 29 and three quarters. But I, I'm not into the nightlife anymore. Okay, so you know, I enjoy the mountain living. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, a great great question here. John says. Okay, how long would you recommend coming down in order to see all of the areas thoroughly enough to know the best place to retire to? Is a week enough or should I plan three or four weeks? I could not see a week, no way. I, was I mean, guessing. you can't see one place in a week. Right, not get okay. any kind of, um, there's so many areas. Okay, we've not even been to the north. Like, uh, like, well, we've been lived in, you know, but, um, a lot of people, a lot of gringos live, live there and we've not even been there, but between, you know, San Vito and Parazella Don and, uh, the beach area and the okay. Caribbean side. Oh my goodness. Uh, so Guanacaste. here's, here's how to answer that question. Okay. So, uh, John, if you've been watching our videos and you've been doing your research and you say, you know what, based on your videos, which if you go to our playlist that talks about the best places to live in Costa Rica, because we got a playlist that talks about the five best places to live from our perspective, our opinion to live in Costa Rica. And if you narrowed it down to one spot, and let's say I've watched all your videos, I've narrowed it down that I want to live in the Paris Eladon area. Okay, maybe, maybe, if you was busy all day a week, you could find a good place, but that'd be stretching. So, what you mean like come and just stay in Paris for yeah, a week and decide on that place? Yeah, possibly. Possibly, but you probably need at least a couple because there's just so much to look at. Yeah. 
Yeah. So and, if you've and it's narrowed not it down. Easy to um, have a realtor. It takes a couple of days to even make an appointment to. Right. Um, Everything happens slow in Costa Rica. I mean, you almost can't do anything in a week in Costa Rica because everything's so slow. So, you know, three or four weeks. Uh, now, in my opinion, if you want to travel all over Costa Rica and just really find out what's good, you need way more than three or four weeks. You need three or four months. And I always recommend you should come to Costa Rica and rent at least for a year. That way you can rent here, rent there, rent here. And you can find out, yeah. do I like the, the temperature? Oh, this area is bad. This area is good. This, you know, there's so much you need to find out. Yeah, and air, things like Airbnb make it a lot easier um, to stay in one area for three, four days and move to another area. So, you know, we did a lot of house sitting, that, but there's not a lot of house sitting going on right now because there's not that much travel going on. But um, really, even the, the temperature is hard to tell because if you're in an area during rainy season or dry season, it's going to be different in the opposite season. That's right. Yeah. You know, an important thing is that you might come over to this area in the dry season and you found this beautiful piece of property. However, in rainy season, you might have to drive through with a four by four to cross a river that wasn't there in the dry season. Right, right. Your driveway to, the to a house you're renting might be wonderful in dry season. And then in rainy season, you can't even make it up the driveway. That's right. So, you know, it's things like that that we say, don't buy right away. Come and rent. For sure, I, w I would never tell anybody to buy right off unless they got an absolutely spectacular deal and they had enough money that, hey, if I don't like it, I'll you know, wait for the market and, and sell it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we're going on an hour on this Q&A and I wanna try to keep it short. So I'm gonna start to, uh, to uh, bring it to an end. So if you have something very important that I haven't answered, be sure to put that in there now. Mm -hmm. But let's go on to the next question because there's a great question here that has uh, Hamza, uh, Hamza TV said, can foreigners buy real estate without a proper visa? No. Okay. I mean, I don't even know how you would come here I, without I a proper visa. I think you can visa. even get in. Right. You know, you know there's, everywhere there's we border. go and try to do any business, I don't care what we do. Uh, you go into the bank, I mean, any kind of business, they're going to ask to look at your passport. So you're going to have to have a proper visa. Right. And we have been on the bus traveling like from San Vito to San Jose to go to the airport and the entire bus will be pulled over and the police will ask everyone in the bus to show their um, either their Costa Rican ID or foreigners have to show their passport. And I have no doubt that if you don't have your passport properly, uh, you're off the you're bus off the bus and, and being taken away. That's you know, right. In, it, we've been at um, stopped before uh, in our private vehicle and they will confiscate your vehicle that's if right. you don't have your passport that's you know? right matter and of fact they this will is, deport you yeah um, uh you know i won't tell this story but i have actually been down to paso canoas while rebecca was shopping and and it's right on the border and i was just kind of you know playing around on my motorbike uh not kind of new and didn't know but i was on the panamanian side but since i didn't have the pocket proper documentation they impounded my motorcycle and it cost me hundreds upon hundreds of dollars another story for another time so and yes they do that check that Panama, but it's the same thing in costa rica right um, they have entire uh groups of police that are dedicated to making sure that you are in the country legally that's right which brings me to the next question but before i get to the next question about panama uh i want to give a big shout out to john who who, who donated uh 10 bucks to our cause you know it says thank you so much you folks are awesome and we greatly appreciate it you know uh you can always support us by joining the forum as a premium member or by by just clicking dollar sign in the chat box and donating to us okay so thank you very much i appreciate it but on to that next question you know uh a person said th uh, about panama have you considered let me go to it real quick have you considered living in panama why or why not that's, that's a great a question. question yeah well panama um the portion of panama that is closest to Costa Rica has very similar terrain and weather. You can't hardly tell that you're in one or the other. Uh, when you get down toward David, uh, the terrain changes. Um, it gets flat. Gets flat. We, we don't like it uh, 
as much there. But anyway, so we considered Panama. Um, Buquete is a beautiful place. Beautiful spot. Uh, lots of gringos have settled there. But what we didn't like about Panama was, um, the, I guess, the military presence. It just seemed, not, not that we, you know, we're not doing anything wrong. It just seems like, um, you know, they're really, really strict. Really, well, really it, with the military presence, there's a lot of military presence, especially at the border. They're carrying these, uh, you know. Like riding on the back of the motorcycle. There'll be two police officers you know, on the with motorcycle. Guns and everything. With an, and, 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 and they don't, Panamanians don't seem to be nearly as friendly. Now, you can get your residency the way easier. It only takes a matter of a few weeks and some money and not a whole lot. But, uh. Things are a lot cheaper. Yeah. Cost However, cost of living is a lot cheaper. Cost of living is a lot cheaper, but like Rebecca said, it's only beautiful from the border to about the city of David, and then it gets flat. And we love the we love the mountains. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why we chose not to go to Panama, and we didn't want to have to deal with the whole military issue. Uh, we didn't have to worry about a government that might come in with military. In Costa Rica, there is no military. Hadn't been for years. Just very friendly. Yes, it is cost more, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. considering the pros and cons, we just felt like Costa Rica was better. Yeah, I think the main decision with that was um, the, the friendliness of the country of Costa Rica. You know, never feel like, um, you know, as long as you, you're not doing anything like uh, being here illegally, uh, things go pretty smoothly. Uh, I have to say, when we were in Panama, we were given a hard time about papers, you know, and things yeah. like that. Even though we had everything in in order, except for that one time <laughs> that uh, they impounded the bike. So I think that's what it is. Costa yeah. Rica is just a yeah. very friendly country. April asked a good question. It says, "I can't find where to join the forum as a premium member." And April, all you can do is once you get into the forum, you go anywhere in the forum. If you look down and it says premium then click on that and it will not give you access and it will say you don't have access and then you can join as a premium. So all you gotta do is just scroll through and you're gonna see several areas in the forum that says premium and, and click on it and then you'll be able to have the opportunity to join as a premium member. That way you can support what we do and we greatly, greatly appreciate that. Yeah, um, I'm gonna excuse myself for just a moment because they're uh, notifying me there. I need to go order our okay. food. Okay, all right. So yeah, we are getting close to that time. So real quick, let me, uh, Jackie says, is San Jose the only airport to fly into from the States? No, you do have two main international airports, one in San Jose, one in uh, Liberia. So those are two main airports that you can fly into. And I think most people fly into San Jose, a uh, great airport to get into. Uh, someone says there's also one in Guanacaste, uh, well, I think that's what they're saying. They're, okay, they're telling you the same thing I just got through telling you. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Brian says, I tried to join the forum, but you got to wait 24 hours. You don't normally have to wait 24 hours. It just means that uh, you may have to wait 24 hours to become premium, but I normally go in there, and as soon as I see you've joined premium, I immediately approve you. So uh, the most important thing is when you join the forum, make sure that you check your spam or junk mail to verify your email if it goes there and you can join instantly but you never have to wait 24 hours because i immediately see that you've joined and i approve you okay um oh Jan janice asked a good question are children required to wear mask in the public areas or just adults and that depends on the age of the children i don't know what that age is but we see lots of small children running around without a mask but at a certain age we see children wearing a mask i don't know what the age requirement or limit is i've been seeing that um like in the grocery stores people aren't bringing their children into the grocery stores or into the bank right um, it's almost all just adults I suppose they, you know, it's a very family-oriented country. Lots of, you know, grandparents, aunts, uncles, everybody lives in the same little area. So I'm supposing they have somebody easily to, to keep their children. Yeah. But there's just not a lot of... Now, there there were before the COVID, you know, the kids yeah, were in the stores course. and so forth. So I'm yeah. thinking that that's, that's why they're yeah. just not... Now, Johnny has them. another... Uh, Johnny has a great question. I think it'd be great to see future video on services. <coughs> excuse me, businesses for the Paris Deladon area. 
So yes, we have a video that I'm already working on that will give you a whole tour of the main strip of Paris Celadon or San Isidro so you can see what's there, okay? Because it really is a great, great place, okay? So you're gonna see that very soon. Okay, well that looks like is the majority. Hey, let me remind you real quick, we got lots of people watching the video right now. There's over 50 people. Please take a moment to smash that like button. That sends a YouTube algorithm a message that says that you like what you're getting here and supports us in a great, great way. So please take a moment right now because there's only 39 likes and there's over 50 people on the, on the live episode right now. So please click that like, like, like right now. That supports us in a great way. Uh, one last time for you to ask your questions before we close it to an end because we are going long here and we don't want to keep it too long, okay? Um, and thanks to everybody who says kind things. Really appreciate that. You, you know, it means a lot. Yes, yes. Uh, John says, how hard is it to bring in pets? Can we have a dog? Absolutely. It's not that difficult to bring in pets. We do have an area inside the forum where Rebecca talks about bringing her pet in. So you do want to check out that. It's not that difficult at all. There okay. are requirements, though. It's not just That's you know, right. um, put your, get a plane ticket for your dog. You, Costa Rica does have rules. Um, about paperwork and for your your pet to be allowed in and if you don't have everything in order they will keep your pet at the um, that's right at customs and you will have to pay uh, for them to house your pet until you get your paperwork in order that's so right I'm glad I didn't have to go through that because that would have broken my heart and my little sweet ginger would have had to stay in customs but I, I read up about it go to the embassy CR dot US Embassy, I think it's dot gov, and they have all the um, the requirements. That's right. So this is a good place that we're going to end this video. I do want to say thank you very much. If this is your first time here, hey, I am Alan, and this is my wonderful wife, Rebecca. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when our next video goes live. We almost always, almost always go live every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We don't always do a live video, but there's almost always a video there. And we try to do a live at whenever we can. So we are so thankful for all the kind words. We thank you for everybody joining. Our channel is growing phenomenally, uh, very fast. Lots of people wanting to come to Costa Rica. And we greatly enjoy putting out all this information. It's a lot of work to do these videos and we greatly and, uh, appreciate your support when you join our forum as a premium member. Yeah, and that, uh, that's what I was about to say. Um, Alan does a lot of work on these videos and so we try, you know, he tries to get one out every week, but it's not always possible depending on what is happening. Yeah, in with life. all of the, yeah. Because <laughs> we do still work. We both have jobs. jobs, you know, and doing all of these videos just puts a lot of extra work on my plate. And so your support by joining as a premium member of the forum really kind of shows how much you appreciate what we do. And heck, at 33 cents a day, I, I can't see you getting the great information you get anywhere else in the world at 33 cents. <laughs> Day. So we thank you very much. Greatly, greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much for all the kind words. And we're going to see you next week. If not live, we're going to see you with a video coming up. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Ciao.